Okay, I've got my seed, coffee. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, my list of goals. Okay, I'll be back. Okie dokie, artichokey, I've got my goals. We're good to go. Hi, uh, welcome to 2023. Happy New Year. I thought today would be a good day to sit down and sort out my seeds. So they're really disorganized right now. They're just all in this cardboard box. And while I'm doing that, I could talk to you about what are the 2023 goals for this garden, this channel, and my business in general. Let's do that together because then I'm not just a talking head, we're actually accomplishing something and I can talk about goals at the same time. I thought this video would be really good to do as sort of a time capsule for myself, but also so that you know where we're headed this year and what to expect. And I can look back on this and see what I planned for 2023 versus what actually happened in 2023. Hopefully in January, 2024, I can come back to this video and watch it and go, hey, I accomplished everything I said I was going to accomplish. <laughs> That's the dream, right? <laughs> okay, well, let's start sorting out these seeds and we'll come back to goals in a few minutes. Right now my seeds are in this gigantic box and they have absolutely no organization. They used to all fit in this little container. And before that, they fit in just like a little yogurt container. So it's definitely expanded. And I have another $130 of seeds from West Coast Seeds on their way to me right now. So we need a bit of a better organization system. So what I was thinking was that I will organize them with vegetables and flowers separated loosely. There's edible flowers, but I think the edible flowers could still go in the flowers. And then within that, I'll just elastic band together things that are the same. So I'll like elastic all the tomatoes together or elastic all the marigolds together or whatever. And then it'll be easier for me to find what I need to find. I know some people buy those plastic organizers for photos from like the craft store and organize everything by variety within that organizer. But Honestly, I don't have enough seeds to need that level of organization yet. And I, I'm also just a little more chaotic than that. Um, and I don't necessarily want to buy more plastic stuff. Watch in a year, I'm gonna have one of those plastic organizers. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so we'll just start sorting this stuff out and I'll start talking through what I have planned for 2023. So we'll start with the garden goals because that's seed related and it's the simplest type of goal for me. Where do I even start? Let's start with this, this part. Okay, so the first garden goal we're gonna talk about for me this year is I really wanna finish building out my, I'm pointing this way because the yards that way. I really want to finish building out my raised bed kitchen garden area that I started last summer and some stuff needs to happen before I can accomplish that. Like namely the gravel pit hole needs to get filled in. And I've requested soil from different soil drop services multiple times now and every time it gets canceled. So like last time um, it got canceled because apparently the site where the topsoil was coming from was really muddy and icky and so they just texted me and said hey you're not going to want this soil it's really nasty um so i didn't get that that was supposed to show up last week and i was really stoked and it didn't so there's a disappointment i think i might put all my herbs together actually instead of putting yeah i'm gonna put all my herbs together that makes sense so yeah, first goal, finish building out that raised bed area that involves filling in the hole and then obviously building the rest of the beds, filling them up with soil. And as part of that, I'd like to add a row of raspberry canes along like raspberry bushes along the back fence line because the earlier you plant perennials, the better. I have a lot of herbs, parsley, oh, another radish. Um, that's perennial, so lovage, squash, more zucchini, beets, butternut squash, um, oh, coriander, I saved this myself, and same with this sweet green basil. 
We can go in the herb section. And then this is saved seed from a uh, sweet pepper. Um, I don't have peppers on here yet, so I can just go here. And uh, here you go, first, first container done. Okay, let's talk about a bit more goals. So the other thing is I realized that I installed one of my raised beds in the wrong place, which is a real pain in the butt um, because I already planted garlic in it. So I did a really detailed garden layout in AutoCAD for the back garden, actually. And I had three feet as the main corridor down the middle of the garden. And then on a whim, for some reason, when I was building the beds, I was like, let's make it four feet. And I built it at four feet without realizing that that would mess up other things in my plan, like the area for raspberries. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I just got over enthusiastic about paths because I read something about wanting wider paths, but that person had infinite backyard garden space and I don't. So, oops, <laughs> at some point I'm gonna have to dig that out and fix it. Let's move on. I've been talking about this garden forever. Okay, number two. I want to plant out the guilds around my two front yard fruit trees. So if you watched my video last spring where me and my husband, Adam, we planted those two fruit trees in our front yard, we planted a an Asian pear and a cherry. I was planning on planting the guilds around those right away. And then life just got busy and I couldn't get wood chip and I couldn't get mulched. And so I didn't end up planting the guilds, which is a really bad excuse for not planting guilds. But anyway, didn't get them planted. I actually already have a lot of the plants for the guilds. So I just have not planted them. So that's goal number two is get those guilds planted. Number three is that I want to put a pollinator garden in front of the hedge towards the street. So in my video last week, basically I was mulching around that hedge that I planted back in October. And there's like a big section at the end of the hedge of just um, straight mulch with no plants in it. So out in that area, I'd like to put a red flower and currant, which is a native shrub here in the Pacific Northwest at the end of the hedge because the hummingbirds and butterflies really like it. And then I'd like to put some more, you know, not necessarily native, but like pollinator friendly plants in that area, like perennials like Rebecca, Echinacea, Agastache, you know, lots of pollinator and hummingbird friendly flowers. And the reason I'm not doing shrubs in that area is because that's where our snow gets piled. When we shovel our driveway and when we shovel the public sidewalk, we have to shovel the snow somewhere and that's where it goes. So I need something that dies back to the ground in that area, so I can't do a shrub, it would just get wrecked. The reason I'm doing the red flower and current is it's further back from the street and they can just take abuse. Side note, that's also why we did the meadow as a strip on the front of the yard is because we have to shovel snow from the sidewalk into our yard. So if I extended my food forest all the way to the street, I would lose my, sh my snow shoveling zone which is something that is really important to consider if you live in a snowy climate and you're going to be, you know, de your front yard, maybe think about where you're gonna put your snow. You know, looking around our neighborhood, some people haven't thought about that and then they end up in this conundrum where they can't shovel their sidewalk anywhere and they end up shoveling into the street. Number, what number am I on? And then my final garden goal for this year, which is related to all these seeds that I need to keep sorting, is to just grow like a boatload of, stuff this year. Last year was a really empty year compared to most for me growing. Um, it's probably the least vegetables I've ever grown in a year since I started gardening a, like quite a long time ago. I think the last time I grew this little I was living in a condo and I grew like one zucchini plant and one tomato on my balcony. That's the last time I grew this few plants. <laughs> So it felt very empty. Like I'm really itching to grow just like a vibrant full garden, go ham, fill up the garden, grow a ton of veggies. Um, so that ties into my seed order that I did last week where I actually ordered a bunch of varieties that are new to me and actually a few plants that are new to me that I haven't grown before. Like I've never done runner beans. So next up, I'm gonna talk about some goals for this YouTube channel. But first let's sort a few more seeds because I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to be sorting seeds. Um, where do I wanna put flowers? Why don't I just put, I'm just gonna put flowers into this bucket um, because I don't have as many flower seeds and I don't think they need to be as organized as my veggie seeds. This is some rose campion from my parents garden and it can be a bit of a beast. So if you plant rose campion, be sure that it's where you want it because it's really hard to get rid of because it has these like, can you see these little teeny tiny seeds? The seeds are so tiny. That's like thousands of rose campion seeds and they spread everywhere. So be careful with rose campion. Here's some brocade marigold that I saved. Let's see if I can do it. Like again, thousands 
thousands of seeds. I always put one of these um, desiccant packages in my seeds if I'm saving them in glass so they don't accumulate humidity. Sweet peas. Uh, Lissum. Zinnias. Okay, YouTube goals. Let's talk YouTube goals. I have three goals listed here, but I think they all sort of fall into one category. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about my goals for YouTube. The big overarching goal for YouTube is to just generally be less awkward about it. I've mentioned a few times that I feel weird filming out in my front yard um, when neighbors are walking by and stuff and how I sometimes avoid filming videos when people are out working in their own yards or walking their dogs or working on their cars or whatever. If we're being honest, that's not a sustainable thing to be doing. If I want to be making YouTube videos, I need to be able to get out in my yard and film. And I know this isn't gonna be a linear progression of like, oh, I'm not nervous about filming in front of people to suddenly being like the most confident person ever in front of a camera in front of people. I think there's gonna be some growing pains as I do some awkward stuff in front of my neighbors and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm filming YouTube videos and they think I'm super weird. I know one of my neighbors knows I have a YouTube channel. He walked by while we were filming, planting the fruit trees and he, he thought that was cool. So, I mean, I don't know. I find neighbors really hard to judge sometimes when you only really talk to them a little bit. Um, yeah, anyway, that was, <laughs> that was a little off topic. Basically, I'd like to just kind of like get over myself and actually film what I need to film without overthinking like whether somebody is watching me film like even right now there's a, like a window right here and I keep looking out the window to be like oh there's my neighbor like watching me film right now that needs to stop because to be honest I'm really enjoying making these YouTube videos and the joy is lost if I'm always worried about what other people think about me and that's like totally something that I just need to work on like within myself and I have been working on that within myself this year that's actually been something that I've been actively working on is like worrying less about what other people think about me. I tend to sort of like put on a mask um, to be more like accepted or whatever in society. You can read into that as much or as little as you'd like to. But um, yeah, I've been working on that this year. So basically, if my neighbors are out, I want to not avoid filming um, because that just annoys me. Like it annoys me about myself that I do that. Oh, the last thing I want to say about that is like, why does no one else talk about this? Like I have looked so hard for other YouTubers talking about feeling awkward filming in front of neighbors. And people talk about being awkward in front of strangers, but I don't personally feel awkward in front of strangers. Like I can go into a public park and film myself and I don't care as much as filming in front of a stranger that I like sort of know, but sort of don't know. For some reason, like specifically neighbors, I think it's because we have that casual relationship where you want them to like sort of like you. But yeah, no one talks about that. Everybody talks about just filming in public or like camera confidence when you're by yourself in your house. And I don't really struggle with that part. I struggle with like filming in my front yard specifically. Now I printed this in such a weird way where like it doesn't flip sideways, it flips upside down. And that's just really annoying me right now. <laughs> so just bear with me. Okay. Okay, number two under the YouTube category is really similar to number one, which is just to be more open about my YouTube channel with people that I actually know in person. I don't think that many people in my life, like my personal life, actually know that I have a YouTube channel. So I'd like to be more open about that because it's actually incredibly awkward if somebody is like, hey, Laura, what have you been doing with your life? And I've been spending the last week making a YouTube video and I can't say that. So I'm like, oh, you know, I've just been like doing stuff. Okay, that one's simple. Number three is sort of a controversial one, but I've been hearing it from a lot of YouTubers lately, um, mostly bigger YouTubers. So this might hurt me being small, but I'd like to really take the pressure off myself a little bit so that I can focus on other aspects of my life. Like if I'm trying, and you've probably already seen this, I don't put a video out every single week anymore, but um, earlier last year, I was really trying to get a video out like every single week, but that's not sustainable for me if I actually want to get big projects done in the garden and like something that I don't talk about on this channel, but that is happening is that we're renovating this house. When we bought it, it was in absolutely horrible condition. You can go back and watch the tour video I did of the garden when we first moved in. 
and you see a little bit of the outside of the house, but I don't show you the inside of our house very much because it was just like trashed. It was so bad. Um, so it's been a huge job renovating this house and I don't have enough time to dedicate into fixing this house to the level it needs to be fixed. If I'm trying to also fix the garden to the level it needs to be fixed and put out a video every week and work on my own personal goals and work on like career goals. So I'm going to take the pressure off myself. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands right now. Like realistically, that's, it's just slowing me down on actually getting real projects done. And videos aren't going to be interesting if they're just like a third of a project. So I think it's more important for me to do an entire project, film it, and then put the video out with the entire project. So like, for instance, this year, um, oh, I forgot to mention garden goals. Um, we want water catchment. Um, and actually, I'm going to a webinar tonight from Verge Permaculture about water catchment that I'm really excited to go to. But yeah, we want to put some IBC tanks in the backyard, hook them up for our gutters and basically have some water catchment because uh, the Pacific Northwest has decided to have droughts every summer now. Uh, so you can't depend on rainfall for your garden. <laughs> so like last year, I think we had like two months of drought. Uh, and I, you have to hand water every day and that's just like so much work. So, and using, you know, city water, which is not great for plants. So I'd like to get some water catchment installed. Where I'm going with this is that I would like to be able to film that project and have a video come out like about the entire project instead of filming like, oh, I went and got IBC tanks. And then that's all that's in that video. I'd like, I don't want to do less than two videos a month. That feels too low. Like ideally I'd still like three. We'll see what happens. This year, I'd like to prioritize actually getting the garden built. Yeah, so speaking of dedicating time to things other than editing YouTube videos, I also have some business goals this year that I wanna work on, like other than YouTube, uh, but I I forgot. <laughs> I keep forgetting to sort these seeds. Like the whole reason I'm here is to sort seeds and I keep forgetting, okay, lupins. I think we've done it. I think I've got these all sorted. Hold on, I need some elastic bands. Big, big elastic bands, all right. So, whew, promise I'd talk about business goals. Let's talk about business goals while we elastic things together. I keep forgetting I even have coffee. It's kind of cold. Okay, so the biggest business goal I have this year, really the only business goal I have this year, is to start designing gardens. You might have noticed this year that my name changed from the tiny suburban garden over to Grove Permaculture. And that's because, I mean, let's be honest, I'm not a tiny suburban garden anymore. When I used to garden in the townhouse, it was very much on a tiny scale. It was like planter boxes on my deck and herbs on the window and like that very tiny scale urban gardening. And there's still like a place in my heart that loves that stuff. I'd like to start designing kitchen gardens and I don't know if I've talked about this before on the channel. I don't think I have. My professional background is actually in architecture. I, uh, I did building technology first at college and then I went to architecture school at university and I worked as a building technologist in roofing and then I went into architectural design and I did like townhouses and towers and single family homes and all that kind of stuff. I actually discovered permaculture in my last year of architecture school. We had this two week program where we went off and did like specialties to sort of explore a field we might not have heard of before. So I went to um, this place in Nova Scotia called The Deanery, which is like a perma an experimental permaculture project, I guess you'd call it, where they build with natural building materials and they have permaculture gardens and stuff. So during those two weeks, we built, we built a natural building basically using like found and recycled and natural materials. Yeah, that's where I heard about permaculture. I hadn't heard about it before. I knew about like natural building and I knew about like organic gardening, but the term permaculture was introduced to me in my final year of architecture school. And pretty much from that point on, I knew that I wanted to do something with permaculture. In fall 2021, during the pandemic, I did my PDC through Oregon State University. And that was like, I felt so accomplished because I'd wanted to do a PDC ever since I discovered permaculture back in architecture school. So like, yes, I did my PDC. I want to go design right away. Um, and then we bought this house. <laughs> 
So my dreams of going straight from like PDC to designing little gardens. Um, and like, I know everybody who's going to comment, like just because you did a PDC doesn't mean you can design a garden kind of thing. You have to start somewhere and it's not helpful to gatekeep garden design because everyone starts somewhere. As long as you're not like lying about your abilities or promising things that you can't deliver, I, I think you just need to get started. So anyway, I did my PDC. I was aiming to start designing, but we bought this house in January, 2022. And then everything just like went off the rails because it was so much work. It was in terrible condition. I talked about this earlier, but it just needed so much more work than we knew that it needed. That's why I ended up working at the garden center, like at the nursery after we bought this house because it helped me continue to learn about plants while not necessarily being in a design space, but I still got to be around plants and learn about varieties and talk to people and find out what people were looking for. So that was a really good experience, I would say overall, maybe not at the very end, but like <laughs> as a general experience, I am glad that I worked at the nursery. I would work at a nursery again. I did really enjoy it. So yeah, I, I really miss designing. Um, that was a big part of my life and it's something that's missing in my life now. Like back when I was designing single family homes, I would look at the drawings the landscape architects were doing or the landscape designers um, doing the designs for our buildings and honestly wish I had their job. <laughs> and yeah, so some, some people in my family, for instance, have suggested I go do a landscape architecture degree, but I've already gone through all the building technology, all the architecture. I've done my PDC, like I'm very done with school. I am hoping that I can do this with informal education from this point on, taking courses from experienced designers and experienced permaculturists um, versus going into another rigid university degree. Because I think that I might, you know, I might go back on this in five years, but I feel like my time in formal post-secondary education is is over. Like, I feel like I have fulfilled my need for that. I've done a lot of it. <laughs> I'm really done with the bureaucracy, honestly. So yeah, I, I'd like to continue my education, but through non-institutional methods. So anyway, to sum up, I'm going to design gardens. That's what I'm going to do this year. I'm going to start with raised bed kitchen gardens. So like permaculture zone one only, um, might branch into a little bit of cane fruit and like soft fruit, um, sort of around the perimeter of those gardens. But I am not at a point yet where I'm going to be doing any kind of like food forest design or perennial systems design, because I'm just, I'm not confident about doing that for somebody else because I'm still learning how to do it for myself but I am confident in annual veggie gardens and like what you would call like a potager or a kitchen garden. And that's one of the reasons that my name changed from the tiny suburban garden to Grove Permaculture because I'm actually setting up my business as Grove Permaculture Design. And you can check out my website down below. It's a new website. So yeah, go check it out. It's gonna be in the description. And if you know somebody in the Metro Vancouver area or the Fraser Valley area that lives in like a, Sub suburb or um, has a townhouse yard or townhouse balcony. That's the kind of scale that I'll be working on right now. And like, feel free to pass my info along because I'd, I'd love to start doing some kitchen garden designs for people. Okay, well, that's all my goals for 2023. Um, it's sounded like a lot. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed hearing about my 2023 goals. And I realized that I haven't finished organizing my seeds, so oops. <laughs> Let's finish doing that right now. Okay, so that's a lot more organized than when we started. I need to find another one of these plastic bins to put my flower seeds in. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my 2023 goals. What are your 2023 goals? If you have a garden or if you don't have a garden, just in general, you know, pop them in the comments down below. We can support each other through our goals. And here's to a great year.
All right, see you next week. Bye.